Welcome back to the training. Now we've already seen how we can create an Excel data source and how we can create tables within that Excel data source. And we also saw how we create a brand new Power Apps application and bring that data source into Power Apps. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch out our Canvas application. And the reason it's called Canvas is because it literally gives you a blank canvas to work from. So on the screen here you can see a blank form or a blank screen and on this screen we can start to add our controls such as buttons, labels, text boxes, forms and we can start to sketch out our Power Apps application. So the first thing I'm going to do now I'm going to add a form and form is basically a container for your controls, for your buttons and text boxes and things like that. So at the top here, where it says insert, if we now come down here and we, it says edit form here at the top. So I'm gonna click that. So there's my form, I can then drag it down here a little bit, move it around the screen. So I wanna create some room at the top. So on the right hand side here you have the properties of the form and even if you add a control on here it's always going to have a property section here as well. So the first thing we need to do is we need to connect our form to our data source. So down at the bottom here it says connect to data but I prefer to use the one here data source. So if I select that and we can see it's already showing the two data sources we have in our application, the departments table and the names table from the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm going to select the names for now. And then you need to come along here where it says edit fields. And it's saying there's no fields in this control. So you add a field. Let's click on the add button here. So what I want to put in here is you can select them in any order you want. I'm going to put first name, last name, age, email, phone and department and then just click add and Power Apps goes away and adds those fields to the form. There you go. So let's just look at what we've done here. We've added a form onto this screen and we've connected that form to the data data source. So our Excel table of names. So what Power Apps does is when it, when it adds a form, it adds what you call a card for each of the values in that data source. So for first name, for example, you can see that highlighted blue border there that that is the card and it's like a container for the other controls so within it you can see we have a label control we have a text box control and it also adds just below it there that is actually a label message so if there's an error at any point on the control in that form a message will get displayed in this little label here at the bottom and each of these cards has the same thing so it has a label a text box that displays the information the message box label so on the right hand side here you have the properties window so this shows you the different properties that are available for each of those controls. So here on the error message we can see that you have fonts, a text value, font sizes, weight, that kind of thing, whether you want to make it visible or invisible. There's some sizing and positioning properties 
as well as color properties and things like that. So it's the same for any control. So a text box, for example, will have a similar set of values and you can change these. You've also got an advanced tab here. And to make changes, you have to click where it says unlock to change properties. Otherwise, you won't better make any changes to this control or, or very few changes. So if I click that, that unlocks everything. So I can now change each of these properties in here. So you have the general properties window and you have the advanced and that contains a set of other properties as well, more advanced properties. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, as we go along, we'll 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 cover some of these additional properties. So let's just change a property. I'll show you exactly how that works. So, for example, the phone control here. If I clicked on that, I might want to change the word phone to become telephone. So if I clicked on that label. I would find that the text property of this is saying parent dot display name. So it's taking the value of the parent. So the parent is the actual card container around it. So if I click on that, it highlights the actual card and the display name is here. So this is what it's using. So you could actually just get rid of most of this and just put the word so telephone and you can see now it's changed from phone to telephone so that's how we can change properties on these cards and controls what if you didn't like the order of these controls so supposing you wanted to put um, department above telephone or something like that um, so all you need to do is click on the card highlight it like that and then click on properties click on edit fields and at this point you can just drag and drop things where you want them so I might decide I want to have telephone before email so I could just move that up by dragging it and there it is it positions it above the email You can also change colors of things as so you might want these headings to be in a different color so you could change that from blue to become red or something like that if you wanted. So now if I run this form, so if you come up to the top here there's a little icon here that says preview the app, if you click that you can see it doesn't really do a great deal. I can enter information into this but I can't actually save it. So how do we do that? Well we need to put a button on the form to save the data. So come along to the top here where it says insert and select button. And I'm just going to drag that at the bottom here so some clear some space and put it here. And I could change the wording on this. So you can either double click it and write over it, or you can just come to the properties on the right hand side where it says text on button. You can put save. But it still won't do anything. So what we need to do here is we need to tell it what we want to save. Now, the good thing about using forms is that it means you don't have to write very much code to save the data on this form. There's two ways of doing it. You can use something called patch. Patch is a little more complex. You have to write a bit more code and you'll have to specify each of these fields in the code. So first name, last name, age, etc. has to go in the code and there'll be a save command in there. But you don't have to do that when you're using forms. You can just use one command. So let's see that in action now. So if you click click on the Save button, and at the top here on the left, you've got what are called the events of that button. So events are like actions. So what do you want the button to do? So if I click that drop down, 
these are all the properties of that button so you've got something here called on select so on select means when you click the button you want it to do something so if I select on select and here at the top this is where you can put in what you want to happen so there's a command that you use to save forms and it's called submit form and then you have to tell it the, the name of the form that you're submitting so to get the name of the form again if you click on the form or you come along here and this is where the controls are held click on that there and you get a tree view of the screen that I'm on plus all the controls within that screen so we we have a button there and we have a form that we put on the screen and all the all the data cards within our form so our form here is called form 1 so come back to the button click on it and in the submit form command all you have to do is put form 1 in brackets and that's it there's no long-winded code or anything like that it's just one command which which will save all the information on your form so I've come back to my OneDrive for business and I'm gonna open up the spreadsheet that we use for the data source so let's have a look at what records we've got in here at the moment so these are the records we have we have five names here so what I'm going to do is in the Power Apps, I'm going to actually add a brand new name. So if I come back to Power Apps and I now run it, And I'm going to leave department blank for now because I'm going to come back to that later. So that's it. So all I need to do now is click on the save button. Now if I come back to my spreadsheet in OneDrive, I'll just refresh the screen. We can now see that Sue West has been added here at the bottom. So this is the record I added in Power Apps, and it's been updated in the Excel spreadsheet. Now, the one thing I didn't add to that record was the department. I could just type it in here manually, so I could put in sales or something like that and save it, and it would be saved in the spreadsheet. But I don't want to do that. I want to actually select from a pick list or a drop down list of departments because in our spreadsheet remember we created a number of departments as another data source so I want to be able to select from any one of these rather than typing in the value so if I come back into design so if I close this down come back into design and I click on the department card and the next thing I want to do is remove this text box control so I click on that and select the delete key on the keyboard but it won't allow me to do that because I need to unlock it again now if I click delete it's gone so what I want to do there is to replace that control with a combo box which is, is essentially going to display a selection, of, a selection of values that I can choose from so if I click on insert here and down here we have combo box so I've selected that and it gets dropped into that card so you might need just just to tidy it tidy it up a bit here and get rid of some of these errors so red marks here are errors and they're normally just kind of formatting errors here so I could just remove these and now the red red symbols have gone away so 
I'll just position this now, the department. So now what I need to do is I need to wire this up to our data source. So if I click on it, click on the control, it's called combo box one. And the data source, I'm going to click here. It's not going to be table names because that's what we have on the form as our form data. It's going to be table depths or table departments. So let's select that. Now if I run the form, we now have a drop down of departments. But we still need to do a few other things. We need to tell the card that holds this what the update value is. And the update value is actually this combo box one. So I click on the card, click on advanced, and look for the update property. And just type in here combo box one. And dot selected. Dot department. So what we're saying here is I want to update the data source with the value that's coming from my combo box, combo box one for departments. So now if we run the form, we could actually change some details here. So If I select a department, say for example I wanted IT, then I save it. If I come back to my OneDrive Excel document, we can see the record's been added Jane Davis with the department IT. So our drop down is working. There's one last thing I want to do here. When you select, it gives you the option to select multiples. So you could do that if she works for more than one department. It's not a great way of doing things, but it does allow you to do that. But if you just want to always just select one and nothing else, then what you need to do is come back into design, click on the control, come into the properties, and there's a property here that says allow multiple selection and you want to turn that off and that will always then allow you to select just a single department so in the next video I'm going to be showing you how we can actually edit records so update them so what we're going to do is we're going to display a list of names, select one, and change the details on that. So we're not going to actually be adding new names like we've done here. And if you want to watch the other parts in this video series, you'll find them listed just below this video in the description. If you like this video, please click the button to like it, or why not subscribe to my channel? Or you can even download my free Power Apps for Newbies book at www.powerappsfornewbies.com.